Good morning, everyone. I have a little bit of a cold, so you'll have to excuse my voice. I hope you can hear me okay, yeah? Okay, so nothing would keep me from seeing you beautiful, smart people today at Next Berlin. So thanks for having me. Um, if, you, uh, if you're on Twitter and you'd like to tweet about this talk, you can find me. I'm AR Stories, much easier than Papa Janice. And, uh, and away we go. So. So a little bit about my background. Um, I am an artist and a designer, and I'm also a researcher. I'm working on my PhD right now at um, York University in Toronto, Canada. And I'm a senior research associate there where we have an augmented reality lab. And what's unique about our lab there is that we are based within the Faculty of Fine Arts and Department of Film. And this is really unique for most augmented reality labs as they're primarily based in computer science labs. So in addition to being an artist and designer and researcher, I also consult in the industry, working closely with, uh, with the large AR software companies in the industry. How many of you are familiar with augmented reality? A show of hands, please. Okay, excellent. And do we have any augmented reality developers or designers in the room? Okay, oh, all right, one, okay, two. No, that's a head scratch, okay. <laughs> so one. Um, so to tell you a little bit about uh, what augmented reality is, we can think of augmented reality in regards to virtual reality. In virtual reality, we're completely closed off from our environment in a completely computer-generated world. In augmented reality now, we have a looking glass into our current um, circumstance or a current context. So you can imagine holding up your mobile phone or your tablet and being able to see content in the form of video, audio, um, 3D animations, text now layered on top of our current surroundings. And so how do we see augmented reality experiences? Well, as, as I mentioned, through tablets and through smartphones. Um, early augmented reality experiences, we experience through webcams um, on desktop computers. We're starting to see more gaming devices integrating augmented reality. And there's a real move um, towards glasses um, and as well contact lenses that this is currently being developed. And so how, how does augmented reality work? Well, there's a trigger in the real world, and this trigger is often an AR marker or fiducial. And um, this has really evolved, actually. We've come a long way. Um, as, as I mentioned, I've been working in AR for the past seven years. And when I began working with augmented reality, we had these kind of curious-looking black and white um, geometrical symbols. And that evolved into things that were like pictograms. And now we're at a point where we're um, beyond markers, so we can track the real world, um, images, photographs, and even objects. And augmented reality tracking includes GPS, not only image-based recognition, um, we're seeing some wonderful examples done with the Kinect, um, and as well as facial tracking. Now, there are a plethora of industries that augmented reality um, relates to. For me, I'm particularly interested in, um, in museums, education, film, um, art, and books. And I have, a, I have a book today that I'll demo for you, in fact. Now, you heard me use the word uh, storytellers and artists a lot today. I use these words interchangeably. I believe that storytellers are artists, and artists are storytellers. And so, on the topic of storytelling, I thought I'd, um, I'd be brave, fingers crossed, and do a live demo for you. So, I'm going to show you my, um, my augmented reality book. This was the first book that was designed for the iPhone and iPad uh, 2, and also currently working on the new iPad. And it's it appears as though it's an ordinary book. There are different pop-up elements you can go through and explore. And as you go through the book, you can enjoy it on its own. Or if you do have the AR-enabled device, so we're going to switch to the live feed. I want to take even a look at the book here. So there are different things that you can go through and explore. And so when we go through the book, we begin to see augmented reality objects appear that we can also interact with and even hold. So this book was actually inspired by psychotherapy studies that were done in virtual reality initially and then in augmented reality. And so this is an example of the technology driving the story and being inspired by the technology. Is there any way to 
Are you? All right, let's try this. Let's. Is that all right? OK, excellent. And so in this instance, there's a narrative that goes through the book, and it says, um, I'll read it to you. The spider appears and grabs hold of my fears. Ants at a picnic. Let's look real quick. And in fact, if you tap on any of the ants here, it'll take you up to a, a Wikipedia page. So it's an example of hyperlinking to the web and being able to access more information. So you can see how augmented reality can be used as an educational tool. And then we also have a magnifying lens that allows us to get a little closer. Now, I know what you're thinking. This is a children's book. We're not going to burn the ants. And this is one of my favorite pages. I hope you can see this. If I put my hand down, the butterflies will actually come and land on my hand. So there's some nice, simple interactivity that allows the viewer to engage. We also have spatialized audio. So the closer you get, let's get that ugly wire out of the way. You can hear the butterfly's wings flapping louder. And so this book was um, designed by me and hand created by me. And I worked with um, my technology partner, Dacry, um, in LA, to, um, based on working with their augmented reality software to create the book. So let's go back to the um, keynote. So augmented reality today is at a place where I believe um, cinema was at about 116 years ago. So math wizards, what year would that bring us to? 1896, OK? And so why is 1896 important? Well, 1896 was the year that Georges Méliès began making his films. So who's Georges Méliès? Well, if you've seen Hugo Cabaret, that movie was, in fact, about him. And Georges Méliès was a filmmaker before, or rather, Georges Méliès was a magician before he became a filmmaker. And he brought his wonderful tricks of the stage um, to create a real cinema, cinematic magic um, in film. And Georges Méliès is particularly important because at the beginning of film and cinema, um, the Lumiere brothers were really taking a more of a documentary approach. So cinema at the onset was really about the technology. And we would see films like um, workers leaving a factory, which is exactly what it sounds like. And these were 47-second films, um, things like a train arriving at a station. So the topic and the content was rather mund mundane. There was a real focus on the technology. Georges Méliès, on the other hand, he brought this real kind of wonderment and fantastical storytelling to cinema. And he also invented new techniques like the stop trick and multiple explosion in film. And so for me, he's a, he's a real creative hero, and he's an inspiration. I, you know, as I mentioned right now, I feel like we are at a time comparable to cinema when it was first new, and we're just beginning to explore content and storytelling in augmented reality. Now, another really wonderful storyteller and artist and a great inspiration to me is Lewis Carroll. So I'm, I hope you're all familiar with his wonderful books, Alice in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass. And for me, they're quite relevant to augmented reality. So I thought we'd take a look at augmented reality um, through the lens of Alice in Wonderland. So here we go. Curiouser and curiouser, augmented reality leads us down the rabbit hole to encounter worlds we've yet to imagine, magically making things appear or disappear, making us question our identities along the way seeing things from new angles, perspectives, big and small. Now, augmented reality is primarily a vision-based medium, excuse me, and we need to really move beyond that to become fully sensorial. Um, we're beginning to see that with touch and haptics, and a little bit with scent and taste. Um, with scent and taste, not so much in mobile yet. We've got these kind of curious-looking devices that you can see on the screen right now. Um, with touch and haptics, however, fully possible. And I invite you to, um, to my blog at augmentedstories.com where I, I wrote a recent article about my experience in haptics and, and my research and, and where, I, you know, where I think this is going. And 
I was really hopeful, and the next web was also really hopeful that the new iPad would integrate this because the technology is there. So, for instance, the book that I showed you, I'd like to imagine being able to not only touch that spider on the screen, but be able to feel the individual hairs of that spider. So the present is a real transitional time in augmented reality. Novel forms, styles, and conventions are just around the bend. It's a critical time for artists and storytellers to experiment with the technology and act as pioneers to help shape the medium, harnessing the unique capabilities of AR to generate new modes and new techniques. So what is it that's specific to augmented reality? How is it different from any other medium before it? Well, it's um, context-reliant, context-specific. It's dimensional, so we have layers. It's illusion-based, so things appear and disappear. It's time-based, it can be highly personalized, and it's unique each time. Now, I wouldn't be from Toronto, Canada if I didn't bring a little McLuhan with me. So Marshall McLuhan says, if you want a clue on rapid technological change, you should look at what artists are doing. And he says, our typical response to a disrupting new technology is to recreate the old environment instead of heeding the new opportunities of the new environment. Failure to notice the new opportunities is failure to understand the new powers. So that's why it's really important that we look at how is augmented reality unique and different from any other medium, and what can we do in um, mobile specifically to really leverage the, the powers um, of this new environment of augmented reality. A little bit about my process on working with augmented reality and my approach. Um, I always begin with the technology. I like to understand the constraints and possibilities, and then I apply content and story. I allow the story to evolve from the technology. So I work with the constraints initially, and then I try and break them and allow new things to kind of occur and happen and let that take me to um, an exploration curiosity. And which brings me to curiosity. Yesterday, a um, really excellent session in the, um, in the make um, session with Kyle McDonald and Kate Hartman, where all these wonderful world, words came up. Curiosity, getting in the guts, getting your hands dirty, um, breaking things. And for me, these are all really important to my process in approaching augmented reality. And it's something that I actually refer to as, as wonderment. And it was uh, the topic of my um, TEDx 2010 talk, where I talk about wonderment and how it guides the creative process and how we can link this to augmented reality. So I'd like to invite you to check that out, please, on YouTube. Now, it's really important as the medium evolves to be continually curious, um, to be inquisitive, to explore, to experiment, to see what's really possible and to try and push the boundaries of this new technology. And it's critical for us to allow curiosity to steer us to new paths. I'd like to leave you with this last slide. It's from Alice in Wonderland. It's, uh, conversation between Alice and the Queen, and this is the challenge I, uh, I propose to each one of you today. There's no use trying, said Alice. One can't believe impossible things. I dare say you haven't had much practice, said the Queen. When I was your age, I always did it for half an hour a day. Why, sometimes I've believed as many as six impossible things before breakfast. So this is your challenge. I want you to believe six impossible things before breakfast tomorrow and ideally every day. And I think if we each do this, um, and specifically in augmented reality and any new medium, it'll really help steer and push the technology in new directions. Um, it's really critical that we imagine new things because that's where it all starts. So thank you so much. Um, again, find me on Twitter or you can email me. And um, yeah, enjoy the rest of your conference. Thank you so much.